Simon, it is awesome to have you here today with us. Yes, Thank you so is. much. Good to be, to be with be you. With I'm Thank a you. fan of your material and your books and your training. It's just amazing. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> and so tell us, you, you're, tell us a little bit kind of the journey of me as far as your training all over the world. Sure, sure. So I left Disney 15 years ago, cashed in my entire 401k with significant Disney stock, took out a line of credit on the house and turned down four job offers to go and work for other companies because I answered three questions. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would I do if no one paid me to do it? What makes me come alive? And when I answered that third question, I said, I want to speak, write, train, consult, and coach if no one paid me to do it. So literally for 15 years, we worked with almost 1,500 organizations in 45 countries, teaching men and women how to live brilliantly, lead differently, and grow profitably. Beautiful. Wow. That's and that's uh, your book you just came out with, Brilliant Living, 31 Insights to Creating an Awesome Life. I think everyone wants to be awesome and have awesome. Absolutely. Well, it really starts with understanding average is over, average is done, average is history. Mm -hmm. So you might as well be brilliant while you are here for the rest of your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Yes. So what I recognize is that in a very busy world that we're in, how can I begin to teach people insights that I've learned from companies and top performers from all over the world in two minutes or less? and give them an application and affirmation that they can use over 31 days. So mm -hmm. that's how it's set up. Great. Two minutes. Two minutes. Can you give us one of those? Yeah. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. So one of the things that I teach is transformation is one inch from your nose. If you think about it, a caterpillar, when it becomes a butterfly, it lives in what it spits out of its mouth. So when you begin to understand that, we have to upgrade our verbal software and recognize that words carry energy and words create worlds. Yes, so how do. do we transform our world while understanding transformation is one inch from our nose? Begin to speak where we're going, not where we've been. I like verbal software. <laughs> That's a new <laughs> term for good. me. That's mm -hmm. good. But yeah, Speaking. we have a problem though. Yes, sir. What if we don't know how to speak? That's where you come in, right? Absolutely. Tell us about how to speak. How should we speak? So first of all, I would encourage everyone listening to us to write down on a piece of paper in 30 seconds or less what's right about you. Because sometimes we focus on what's wrong with us, mm -hmm. and that is the story that we tell ourselves, and that's the story that comes out of our mouth. So mm -hmm. something happened, we make up a story, mm -hmm. and we give speech to it. When you write down what's right about you, now you begin to speak where you're going and who you're becoming by speaking in the right way. Good. Oh, that's that's cool. excellent. I think that's in the Word of God, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's a principle. Who uh, knew? Yeah, exactly. You right. copied that out of the Word yeah. of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what that's kind of amazing. stories have you seen as far as transformation of people's lives when they apply these principles, what they speak about themselves to others, how they see themselves, what they say? One of the emails we received from a mother, she said that she is a bonus mother. She has a stepdaughter that she's trying to build a relationship with. And she began to read the first step of creating an awesome life on Dare to be Brilliant. And her stepdaughter said, well, how do I dare to be brilliant? What does that mean? And she began to tell her about understanding your strengths in life. What makes you unique? Well, literally, they started a puzzle based on reading the book, and they went out to Shutterfly and asked Shutterfly to create puzzle pieces mm -hmm. that spoke to the strengths of her 12-year-old daughter. She said Shutterfly sent her back a 225-piece puzzle that they put together. Now it lives on the wall of her 12-year-old stepdaughter, and she says, I know what my strengths are. Wow. I don't have to worry about being average. And when we read it, I was like, oh my goodness. So now we call it the strength puzzle. And we're going to share that story to encourage other parents to begin to help your teenagers understand school grades you on the average. But if you see yourself as brilliant, you exceed average scores. Good. Wow, Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. As we think we are, right? Absolutely. And so when you start with kids and you start putting that in them at an early, early age, age, instead of speaking curses over their life, you're dumb, yeah. you can't do this, you never would. Why? Uh, would you think you could do that? Yes. Tell us the uh, the culture. I mean, how do most people live? I mean, tell us the problem. You know, how how were we trained? How do people live life? And we know speaking's part of it, sure. but it starts up here. Sure, absolutely. Tell us what you've you've done a lot of studies. I know. Sure. So tell us what what you see out there. So Princeton Psychology Department says when the brain is worried about change, uncertainty ambiguity and volatility, the brain slows down. 
When the brain slows down because of worry, the brain doesn't create neurogenesis, which is the process of growing neurons, which grows the brain. Mm -hmm. So if the brain slows down because of worry, change, ambiguity, change has a best friend called stress, and stress has a first cousin called fear. And when stress, fear, and worry get on the same page, they slow down the operating system of a person who's made in the image of Christ and after his likeness. So when we find how to use the control alt delete button, which is who am I and whose yes. am I, right. you begin to delete from the mind drive and the heart drive those things that cause worry, stress, and fear. Oh, awesome. So take me in a step. I mean, tell me, uh, let's say I don't have anything going for myself. Sure. Okay, you're, you know, you're coaching people how to live the awesome life. Yes. The brilliant. I, have, I don't have a great job. I don't have really, you know, I'd, I'd come inside on an education. I don't, I really have nothing going for myself. How am I going to live the brilliant life you're talking about? First thing you have to start with is seeing your life as a puzzle. And whatever's happened to you is just a piece of the puzzle. So the first thing I begin to examine, where have I been? And the where have I been question is, how did I get to this point? What have I learned? How have I grown? The second question is, why am I here? Now, the why am I here is not why did my mom meet my dad, but, <laughs> but why are you here, right? Yeah. The third question is, what can I do? Because so many people focus on this has happened and I can't do anything about it. But the what can I do question becomes the bridge to where you want to go. Yes. And then the fourth question is the strategy or the plan, where am I going? Because some people plan their vacations better than they plan their lives. Right. That true. is true. true. They just let life happen to them, right. and they feel like they're a, they're a victim of circumstances instead of taking control of that them. That is a good statement. Say it again about vacation. So some people plan their vacations better than they plan their lives. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of energy when it's time to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. But what about your life? My mentor, uh, Tudor Bismarck, said to me a few years ago, he said, do you have a 20-year strategic life plan? based on how you will grow spiritually, financially, wellness, socially. And I said, no. I said, why do I need a 20-year strategic life plan? He said, because in 20 years you're going to be older, but will you be better? Huge opening, Ooh. huge eye-opening experience. That's I said, kind of you know question. what? I can be intentional about that. That's yes. brilliant living. Not letting it happen, you being a part of the solution. Mm, that's excellent. How does that impact people's businesses? and their families. One of the things we are hearing from businesses who really understand brilliant living is that they can shift from customer service to customer love. Customer love is going above and beyond for the customer, not because you have to, but because you want to. So it's not just doing more of the same, it's looking for that opportunity to surprise and delight. That's brilliant. That's not average. Right. Like vacation. <laughs> totally, totally. So people get excited about vacation, that's plan true. it so well, because that's something they're enjoying. Yes. But a lot of times they're not enjoying their job Absolutely. or what they're doing with their life. Right. And brilliant living is really an invitation to your point to understand that a job means just overboard. But quit your job <laughs> and go to work. Because when you go to work, you make the joyfulness of the job come alive. That's beautiful. Okay, we got to get back on that one. When we come back here in just a minute, we're going to ask a little more definition on that last bit you just okay. talked about, how to enjoy the journey when we come right back. It's time for you to accelerate into the life God has for you. Let go of the past and let go of toxic relationships. Do whatever you have to do to stay on the vision. You need the life-changing teachings from this year's Provision Entrepreneurs Conference to get to the next level and experience something completely new. Get all seven Power Pack Mentorship teachings from this year's Provision Conference main sessions on CDs or DVDs and get started. I'm saying to you, don't you let go. Don't you quit. You obey God. Do what He's called you to do. It's going to infect other people's. Gary Cassie shares an amazing, critically important two-part message of kingdom growth, the nine laws of acceleration. The Lord spoke to me in a dream and said, Gary, there's nine laws of acceleration you need to do to get to your destiny. Number five is the law of strategy. Now this is, they're all very important. But this one's a game changer. Drenda Cassie shares a personal and compelling message of success and sabotage. Right picture, more power. So there's some things you need to quit, but don't quit the right things. 
I'm going to encourage you that. Don't quit the right things. Leadership architect Dr. Sam Chan and his first message, how or where, position for abundance. How do you provide for somebody else's need when you don't have the provision yourself? In his second message, Dr. Chan energized the room with seven steps to your destiny. It doesn't matter what business you are in, you have to think about what's my product, the process, and then the people. Also at this year's conference, leadership imagineer Simon T. Bailey returns with two messages of brilliance and competitive advantage. When you really understand what you have in you, you quit your job and you go to work. Customer service is dead. Customer love and platinum service is an experience that happens in the moment. Log on now to get seven main session CDs or DVDs of Provision Conference for only $39 or more. A team of experts also taught eight inspiring and practical workshops full of kingdom knowledge. Get the entire 2017 Provision Conference, main session audios and videos, and the informative workshop audios on a convenient USB drive for your best ministry gift of only $99 or more. Call 877-894-3848, go to drenda.com, or write P.O. Box 647. And for only $39 or more, get the 2017 Entrepreneurs Conference on seven CDs or DVDs. Or get everything, main sessions and workshops on the amazing Provision USB drive for a $99 or more gift. Get the mentorship you need and accelerate to the next level with God. Discover your potential and grow in the kingdom. Call, write, or log on and get Provision 2017 now. We're here with Simon Bailey, author of Brilliant Living. You need to get this book, 31 Ways to Have an Awesome Life, to create something beautiful in your life, not just survive, but thrive. Uh, Simon, we were talking about the joy in the job, the joy of the journey in life. But some people would say, I don't have any joy in my life or my right. journey. I was rejected as a child. Things were hard for me. What would you say to someone who's had a lot of rejection and because of that, a lot of emotional baggage? Understood. So first of all, joy is enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm means crammed up full of God. <laughs> when like I am enthusiastic, awesome. no matter what I'm in, I recognize that what I have been through I got through. Mm -hmm. I can move to mm -hmm. what's awaiting me, but I can't get to till I move through all of the things that I've been. So I experienced rejection. And, and one of the things that I experienced in rejection, I had been going to a company for 10 years asking them, you know, please put me on your platform. And they said, no, because you're not that good. And I took it personal. But what I recognized, they had just given me a gift. When I stopped chasing them and I went and hired two coaches to understand how do I improve, how do I up my game, I went back to them and they said, not only do we want you, we want you to do X, Y, Z. What I recognized that that rejection became the open door for me finding the joy in my love again and serving the body of Christ. That's beautiful. Wow. So you got better, not bitter. Exactly. You decided better, to better. take the criticism and do something constructive with it. Yes. And what do you do if criticism comes from someone that really is not a fan that's trying to help you or someone that's trying to encourage your life? They're really just against you. Yes. Does that still work for that case as well? You know, I think there's three things. Number one, Holy Spirit, where are they coming from? Because people don't see you as you are. They see you as they are. And sometimes they project. So Holy Spirit, yes. where are they coming from? The second thing is, did they awaken something in me that has been buried that I haven't dealt with? Because mm -hmm. whatever you don't deal with will eventually deal with you. Yes. And sometimes it gets you, they catch you on the wrong day, right? So you really have to study yourself and say, okay, where's this coming from? But then the third thing is, how do I begin to hear in the spirit it was given and either address it or delete it and go from there? 
You know, because sometimes people, they don't deal with their stuff and they put it on you. So I really, right, really right. ask the Holy Spirit, and that's why I encourage everyone listening to us to say, where does this really come from and, and how do I deal mm -hmm. with it? Right, because if we let it sabotage our success, if we let those voices talk to us and talk right. to us, and especially if we don't take any positive action to change it. Absolutely. They become the gremlins of brilliance that sit on your shoulder <laughs> yes. and eat away yes. your future. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, let's just, can we define brilli brilliance? So let's define what the brilliant life is. The brilliant life is the God it factor that shines brilliantly from you. When you understand that God it factor, that thing that makes you come alive, you can walk into a room and you're not in the room, the room is in you because the very presence and the brilliance of God fills the room. You fill the room with your spirit. So are you, are you meaning uh, a person's unique gifting or passion? Or your gifting, your talent, your ability, whatever you've been called to do, that's the brilliance of God. Now, I know I've talked to you before, and a lot of people feel stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, study shows 70% of people don't like their job. 30-some mm -hmm. percent hate their job. Mm -hmm. and your solution for that, I remember you discussed that. Your solution <laughs> is? Quit your job yeah. and go to work. <laughs> just overboard. You said job just, is just, just overboard. overboard. Your job is not a place for you to be happy. Mm -hmm. A job is where you go to work to be deployed to be the best that you're supposed to be and find your happiness in that. So you're not waiting for the organization to pat you on the shoulder and, and saying kumbaya, the adult <laughs> daycare center is closed. <laughs> be who you are because your life might be the only Bible people read. That's right. right. That's right. And when we pass over opportunities regularly, we become poor, right? Absolutely. And <laughs> we are, that's... We're in places we don't love and not enjoying our life, we're not, we're not living a brilliant life, totally. then there's misery and we make others miserable. And we never find the joy. So here's what I want to make sure everyone takes away. Mm -hmm. A paycheck is given to people who show up, but opportunities are given to men and women who work beyond what they're paid to do. True. That's brilliant living True. in a nutshell. True. So if someone wants to get a pay increase and they are working for someone, what do they need to do? Number one, go to your boss. What can I take off your plate? What is that that you hate doing that I can do? Number two, raise your hands for projects that nobody wants to do. Number three, when you're given an assignment, do it pristine. Make it mamma mia. Do it the best <laughs> where everybody says, we got to give that person more work. You won't have to chase for a pay raise. The pay raise will chase you. True, true. <laughs> yeah. And probably headhunters and all kinds of people <laughs> totally. will be coming after you. You create totally. your environment. Right, because you, you create your opportunity. You quit your job and you went to work. Mm. Talking about uh, doing things with brilliance, uh, I know I've heard you speak about customer service. Yes. And going the extra mile, not with your boss, but the interaction with people in your position. And you talked about that. Could you, you had several steps yes. that I remember you went through, but that was, I thought that was brilliant. Customer love is all about the spark. Mm -hmm. How do we begin to see our customers as guests? How do we personalize the experience? How do we anticipate and go above and beyond what they need? How do we respond immediately, be uber responsive? And then how do we keep them loyal by surprising them and delighting them? Remembering the birthday, the anniversary of when they first dealt with our business. When you become the spark, you give platinum service with a brilliant touch. It's all about culture, right? It's totally. about setting the culture. Culture is how we do things. And culture in any business happens when no one is looking. We've that's lost the of, real lost culture. Of business people. <laughs> and that's, it is a competitive right. market, even more so now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying they take it there, right? Totally. They have to. They to have survive to. in this. And not just survive, but to be the best. Yes. What you expect, you inspect. And you inspect to make sure the culture understands that the mission and values don't live on the wall. They live in the head, the heart, and the hands. And when that alignment comes, the feet will follow. Good, good. Mm, when is the right time to let someone go? If a, a business owner saying, I have struggles in my business and employees, we're not getting along with things. When is the right time and when is, what is, what is fixable? <laughs> Yeah, three things. Number one, the moment you get feedback from staff that there's a rotten, a rotten apple in the bunch, 
it's got to go. Coach them up, coach them out. The second thing is I always like to give people as many chances as possible because sometimes people are dealing with external things sure. that they bring to work. So you want to bring them to a place of healing. Mm -hmm. But if that person will not get on the bus, invite them to find their happiness elsewhere. And then the third thing is to recognize that there are some people who just want to have a bad attitude. And you know what? We bless them, we love them, but we release them into their destiny. Right, right. It's part of their coaching, right? Absolutely. Because they, they're hurting themselves and then they're hurting the team. And they're not in destiny. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're out of place. Yes. They're in the wrong lane because the job may have worked to a point and it no longer fills their cup or feeds their soul. So we bless mm -hmm. them, we love them, and we got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. For their sake as well, right? <laughs> For That's their sake good. as well. Yes, absolutely. Fine. I wanna, we got about a minute left here. I want to mention this yeah. book again. So it's 31 Insights to Creating an Awesome Life. I assume that is like a daily devotional. It is, totally. So two minutes a day. Two minutes a day. Giving insights that kind of reprogram their... And there's an affirmation, but most importantly, there's an application. Because I, le I believe we're living in a time where people need application that they can apply mm -hmm. immediately. But instead of trying to overwhelm you to read the entire book, just one a, day one a day and do that. But then we say, read it over 90 days. So rinse and repeat because, <laughs> you, and repeat. because your blood cells change every 90 to 100 days. Really? And you're moving into yeah. a new season. So that's our, yeah. our methodology. That's really good. That's you're awesome. You're full of brilliant wisdom, <laughs> Simon. I'm going to ask good. as we close, one more tip. It's one more. You got one more? Yeah. So one of my favorite tips is to recognize whatever has happened in life is just a piece of the puzzle. When I left Disney to go and do this work, I recognized that there were people that I met in my journey who helped me. And when I came back to them to say, hey, here's what I'm doing, I recognized, oh my goodness, everything I went through was just a piece of the puzzle. And when you zoom out and you see the big picture, you recognize that what God has put in you is the missing piece of the puzzle. Good. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Well, it has been brilliant and amazing <laughs> to have you with us today. Thank you. I love yes. you guys. We Grateful love you too. We love what you're so doing you so Thank you. and empowering people and businesses to grow and to prosper. It's beautiful. Thank you. thank you. And thank you for the, the book and all you're doing across the, the world, the nations, thank you so inspiring much. people. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you so much. Love you guys. God bless you. Thank you. It's time for you to accelerate into the life God has for you. Let go of the past and let go of toxic relationships. Do whatever you have to do to stay on the vision. You need the life-changing teachings from this year's Provision Entrepreneurs Conference to get to the next level and experience something completely new. Get all seven Power Pack Mentorship teachings from this year's Provision Conference main sessions on CDs or DVDs and get started. I'm saying to you, don't you let go. Don't you quit. You obey God. Do what he's called you to do. It's going to infect other people's. Gary Cassie shares an amazing, critically important two-part message of kingdom growth, the nine laws of acceleration. The Lord spoke to me in a dream and said, Gary, there's nine laws of acceleration you need to do to get to your destiny. Number five is the law of strategy. Now this is, they're all very important. But this one's a game changer. Drenda Cassie shares a personal and compelling message of success and sabotage. Right picture, more power. So there's some things you need to quit, but don't quit the right things. I'm gonna encourage you that. Don't quit the right things. Leadership architect, Dr. Sam Chan, and his first message, how or where, position for abundance. How do you provide for somebody else's need when you don't have the provision yourself? In his second message, Dr. Chan energized the room with seven steps to your destiny. It doesn't matter what business you are in, you have to think about what's my product, the process, and then the people. Also at this year's conference, leadership imagineer Simon T. Bailey returns with two messages of brilliance and competitive advantage. When you really understand what you have in you, you quit your job and you go to work. Customer service is dead. Customer love and platinum service is an experience that happens in the moment. 
Log on now to get seven main session CDs or DVDs of Provision Conference for only $39 or more. A team of experts also taught eight inspiring and practical workshops full of kingdom knowledge. Get the entire 2017 Provision Conference, main session audios and videos, and the informative workshop audios on a convenient USB drive for your best ministry gift of only $99 or more. Call 877-894-3848, go to drenda.com, or write P.O. Box 647. And for only $39 or more, get the 2017 Entrepreneurs Conference on seven CDs or DVDs. Or get everything, main sessions and workshops on the amazing Provision USB drive for a $99 or more gift. Get the mentorship you need and accelerate to the next level with God. Discover your potential and grow in the kingdom. Call, write, or log on and get Provision 2017 now. There's no limit to what God wants to do in your life. You're the limit. Tear the wall down. Your kingdom, your authority come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a major key. What's in heaven is supposed to be in your life, but you have to bring it here. This kingdom advance is designed for you. It's where we can get together, share, talk about the kingdom, get into any question you have, and hopefully come up with an answer so you can leave encouraged, prayed for, and have a better understanding of your life, the kingdom way.